Yo, what is going on, everyone? My name is Nick or the Notorious Fantasy, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about my week number three quarterback rankings for fantasy football in 2021. Inside today's video, we're going to be going over my top 24 ranked quarterbacks of the week, as well as going in depth as to why I have them ranked at each and every single spot inside of the top 24. But before we get into the breakdown of the quarterback position for the week, I would like to ask if you are new to the channel and you do end up enjoying today's video, to please make sure that you hit that subscribe button down below. Not only is it free, I put out content every single day to help you guys win your 2021 Fantasy Football Championship. And while you're down there, whether you are new to the channel or not, please make sure you hit that like button down below to help boost this video up the algorithm so that more beautiful people like yourself can see today's video. I would also like to ask if you guys have a Twitter and would like to follow me on there, please do so at NotoriousFNTSY. The link to my Twitter is also down below in the description. So without further ado, let's get into it. We begin at number one with Kyler Murray of the Arizona Cardinals going up against the Jacksonville Jaguars in Jacksonville. Kyler Murray and the Arizona Cardinals are on fire right now. This is one of the better teams in the NFL offensively going up against one of the worst defenses in the NFL. Trevor Lawrence is prone to just turning the ball over at this point thus far through the first two games of his career, which will give Kyler Murray even more opportunity to throw the ball or run the ball later on in the game. The weapons there in Arizona are just insane at this point. DeAndre Hopkins as well as Rondell Moore. Christian Kirk does have his games, but that does certainly help out Kyler Murray a ton. Same thing goes with having a reliable running back to dump the ball off to, like Chase Edmonds, as well as James Conner, who will get his licks in during the game. I think Kyler Murray is a very safe option on the week and does have the upside to be the number one quarterback, and that is why I have him ranked as the number one quarterback on the week. I just love this matchup up against a not-so-hot Jaguars defense. At number two, we have Lamar Jackson of the Baltimore Ravens going up against the Detroit Lions in Detroit. This is a very similar situation with Kyler Murray to Lamar Jackson. Both quarterbacks have been playing great thus far this season and they're both going up against not so hot defenses. The Detroit Lions defense got absolutely pounded in by the Green Bay Packers offense last week in week number one. The 49ers offense pounded them out so I expect Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens to have no struggle at all putting up a big point total on the Detroit Lions. The later on they get into the game the more the more that they're going to be able to run the ball in this matchup and I know hey Nick the running the ball doesn't really help out the quarterback. That's true in most situations, but not in the situation where we have Lamar fucking Jackson as the starting quarterback. So I think Lamar Jackson should be in for a big spot here up against a very bad Lions defense. At number three, we have Russell Wilson of the Seattle Seahawks going up against the Minnesota Vikings in Minnesota. When it comes to Russell Wilson going into the season, I was thinking, you know what? Pete Carroll's talking a lot about how they want to run the ball more in Seattle. And I started thinking, you know what? Maybe there's going to be a more run heavy attack. Maybe they don't let Russ cook because Pete Carroll never really seems to give the reins fully to Russell Wilson. And then, you know, this season starts. I'm like, okay, let's see this running game. And then bada bing, bada boom, right out the fucking gate. Russell Wilson is slinging the ball to Tyler Lockett. He's slinging the ball to DK Metcalf. This is a matchup up against the Minnesota Vikings. Now the Vikings are 0-2 right now, but through their first two games, they fought well up against the Bengals, as well as up against the Arizona Cardinals, who we just talked about a couple of minutes ago with Kyler Murray. So this is a good Minnesota Vikings team. This is a team that's going to be able to go tit for tat with the Seattle Seahawks. Both defenses aren't all that elite, just about average defenses in the NFL, which could lead to a back-and-forth firefight affair through the air. So I like Russell Wilson a ton this week up against the Vikings. At number four, we have Patty Mahomes of the Kansas City Chiefs going up against the LA Chargers. Basically, every single week, Patrick Mahomes is going to be ranked inside the top five because he's so fucking good, it doesn't even matter who he's playing. Players like Devontae Adams, like Christian McCaffrey, like Travis Kelsey are just guys that you're going to play every single week, and you're going to rank very highly at their position every single week regardless of the matchup. Patrick Mahomes is included in that the guy is just so good. This week, he gets a draw up against the LA Chargers, which is a tough matchup on paper, but the Chiefs typically play quite strong up against the LA Chargers and Justin Herbert the pervert. I expect this to be a back and forth game, which is something that the LA Chargers game wasn't last week that a lot of people expected, including myself, between the Dallas Cowboys and the LA Chargers. I think Patrick Mahomes plays very well in this matchup as my quarterback number four. At number five, we have Dickie Dak Prescott of the Dallas Cowboys going up against the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, I would say right now, looking at the top five, basically any of these guys could be the number one quarterback on the week. 
there are a ton of quarterback matchups this week that I feel like are very ideal and that could lead to the quarterback becoming the best quarterback in fantasy on the week. So Dak Prescott going up against the Eagles. Dak Prescott in basically every single game this guy is going to play in is going to put up a big point total aside from last week up against the LA Chargers and week number one up against the Bucks. He was one of the best quarterbacks on the week. This week he goes up against the Philadelphia Eagles in an NFC East matchup. I expect Dak Prescott to put up big points here just like I expect Jalen Hurts to be able to fight back back into the game. That is why Jalen Hurts is also ranked inside the top 10. This is a great matchup for both quarterbacks. The Dallas Cowboys did look to run a little bit more last week up against the LA Chargers. That is going to be a little bit harder to do, in my opinion, up against the Eagles if they are able to kind of get this into a firefight where both teams are scoring a bunch of points. I expect Zeke as well as Tony Pollard to be usable in this game, but I think Dak Prescott has a big bounce back spot this week up against the Eagles. At number six, we have Tampa Bay Tom Brady of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers going up against the LA Rams in LA. This is going to be the biggest test for Matthew Stafford thus far this season for the LA Rams is the LA Rams or are the LA Rams would be the correct uh, kind of saying here. Are they legit? Are they frauds? Is Matthew Stafford legit? Is Matthew Stafford a fraud? Now, my opinion is the LA Rams and Matthew Stafford are both quite legit right now, and I think they are a team that could end up making their way to the Super Bowl to get their shot at the Lombardi, but Tom Brady has been playing fucking lights out through the first two games of the season, and this matchup up against the LA Rams, while you may worry because the LA Rams have a tough defense, I'm not going to lie about that, but Tom Brady is so good, this offense is so loaded, that I feel as though Tom Brady could have a very big game this week and what could be a back and forth affair in LA. At number seven, we have Jalen Hurts, quarterback of the Philadelphia Eagles going up against the Dallas Cowboys in Dallas. Jalen Hurts last week actually had a relatively solid fantasy football day, despite the fact that the game was 17 to 11. Normally when a game is that low scoring, both quarterbacks end up being duds in that matchup, but Jalen Hurts runs the ball so much that it kind of negates the fact that maybe if they're not able to score 24 plus points or something like that that the quarterback could still have a great day I like Jalen Hurts a lot here up against the Dallas Cowboys he has really not necessarily proved me wrong because in the offseason I talked about how I wasn't sold either direction on Jalen Hurts I wasn't going to come out here and tell you guys that you need to fucking aggressively draft Jalen Hurts but I also wasn't going to tell you guys to just completely fade Jalen Hurts I have him on two out of four of my redraft team so I like Jalen Hurts a lot and I think he will have some decent upside in this game up against Dallas and he could be one of the better quarterbacks on the week, especially if the Dallas Cowboys are able to really put the pedal to the metal. At number eight, we have Justin Herbert, the pervert of the LA Chargers, going up against the Kansas City Chiefs. Just like with Dak Prescott, Justin Herbert was a huge disappointment last week compared to what everyone was expecting him to do. And maybe that's our fault, right? Because we had because we all had sky high expectations for Justin Herbert last week. This week he gets the Kansas City Chiefs, the team he played his first ever NFL action against after Mr. Tyrod. Taylor got stabbed in the lung by his doctor and after that it's been Justin Herbert season in LA for the Chargers I think this matchup is pretty solid Justin Herbert hasn't really put up any big games thus far this season up against the Washington football team or up against the Dallas Cowboys for fantasy but I wouldn't fret just yet I wouldn't run away from Justin Herbert the pervert just yet I'm going to be perfectly fine rolling him out there this week as a top 10 quarterback at number nine we have Danny Dimes Danny Jones Danny Stumbles Danny Fumbles of the New York football Giants going up against the Atlanta Falcons. Now I'm going to continue to bang the fucking drum at aggressive speeds for Daniel Jones, but I understand the immense amount of risk that comes with Daniel Jones every single week. He's like Jameis Winston on fucking steroids at this point because Daniel Jones has been running the ball so effectively for the Giants. Now, there's a chance that he fumbles every time he runs the ball because he doesn't know how to hold it correctly, but it is what it is. He has that upside. He's going up against a garbage Atlanta Falcons defense where he could put up a huge point total, but the one thing I want to add to Daniel Jones this week is that it seems like basically everyone and their mother is is riding Daniel Jones to have them win their week. To have a big game this week. And I'm thinking that now that everyone is collectively on Danny Dimes in this game, that he is going to completely fuck us over to have that Daniel Jones game where he throws interceptions, where he isn't maybe able to run the ball, or he fumbles and makes these costly decisions because Daniel Jones is a turnover machine. I think he's going to have a great game here up against Atlanta, but I want you guys to understand that there is a lot of risk. Daniel Jones could easily be the number one quarterback on the week, but there's also a chance that Daniel Jones is Daniel Jones. It's like how Juju Smith-Schuster last year before the Browns game, he said the Browns is the Browns, and then obviously the Browns smacked the shit out of them, but 
that what I'm saying here is that Daniel Jones is still Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones didn't magically become the second coming of Patrick Mahomes or something. He just ain't that good. But at the end of the day, this matchup is too juicy for you to sit down, Mr. Jones, this week, quarterback number nine. Closing in the top 10, we have Josh Allen, quarterback of the Buffalo Bills, going up against the Washington football team. Now, Josh Allen, through the first two games, hasn't played great for fantasy. Now, he hasn't played bad, right? He hasn't completely bent your team over and eviscerated them through your team's asshole, but he also hasn't necessarily had that huge game where he wins you your week or helps you win. He, he's just been a guy that, hey, you play him and you're not pissed off that you started him. Up against the Dolphins, things looked bad at the beginning of the game for the Buffalo Bills. The offense wasn't really looking all that great, and then obviously Tua Tonga-Vailoa gets hurt very early on in the game, and then by the second half when the Dolphins don't have any points on the board, the defense just ended up getting giving up. They didn't give a fuck, and they let up a bunch of points later on in the game, but Josh Allen didn't look too good at the beginning of that game. Up against the Pittsburgh Steelers, to me, Josh Allen hasn't looked all that good. Stefan Diggs hasn't looked all that good either for fantasy football, but I think this week they all have a big game up against the Washington football team. To me, the, the thing is that there's just so many good quarterbacks this week that it moves Josh Allen down to quarterback number 10. If you're like, oh, Nick, that's fucking crazy. Josh Allen should be ranked ahead of Daniel Jones, then that's okay as well. A lot of these quarterbacks are very, very close in my mind. I like Josh Allen this week. I got him on one of my teams. I'm excited to see him play up against the Washington football team, especially since I feel as though the Washington football team defense is definitely overrated at this point. But before we get on in to the breakdown of quarterbacks 11 through 20, if you guys have ended up enjoying thus far, please make sure you hit that subscribe button down below as well has hitting that like button. I would appreciate it a ton. So next up, we have quarterback 11, A.A. Ron Rodgers of the Green Bay Packers going up against the San Francisco 49ers. Now this matchup up against the 49ers is far from the matchup they had last week up against the Detroit Lions, where Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Jones, as well as Devontae Adams just pounded out. The Detroit Lions this game up against the 49ers will be a tougher task. Now, we did see the 49ers get into a low-scoring game in week number two up against the Eagles in week number one. The San Francisco 49ers and the Lions, that was a blowout early on, but later on in the second half when the 49ers, for some reason, decided to play prevent defense, when in reality, prevent defense doesn't stop fucking anything. All it does is prevent you from playing the normal defense that got you to the point. I don't understand it, but at the end of the day, Aaron Rodgers is going to be a top 12 quarterback every single week. He is a guy that you can rely on. I understand he shit the bed in week number one, but I think that time has passed him. I think he plays quite well up against the Niners. At number 12, we have Matty Snapback, Matthew Stafford of the LA Rams, going up against the Buccaneers. Now, like I said, this is a game where I expect the Rams to play quite well. The Rams were originally the favorites in this game and now I think they're the underdog or one or the other they were maybe the underdog and now they're the favorites this is a game that is basically a coin flip in my mind these are two of the better teams in the NFC these are the two teams that could face off toe-to-toe -to -toe in the NFC championship Matthew Stafford has looked unreal up to this point him and Cooper Cup's breakfast have lifted Matthew Stafford to superstar him for fantasy football now if you guys have watched me for the last couple of years I've always been a big fan of Matthew Stafford especially in this offseason to talking him up a ton as one of the bigger quarterback steals of the season, and he has been that thus far. Matthew Stafford has been on fucking fire with Cooper Cup. Robert Woods, I expect to have a decent season, but again, seems like Cooper Cup took the throne as the number one wide out on this team. Matthew Stafford is in for a solid game here up against the Bucks. The only thing that worries me is somehow that the Bucks just roll the LA Rams because that just seems like something that could happen. It seems like it could happen any game with Tom Brady under center. At number 13, we have Teddy Two gloves, Teddy Bridgewater, Teddy Horsecock, Horsecock Teddy himself, Teddy Throzevelt of the Denver Broncos going up against the New York football Jets. The Jets defense is putrid. When you think of the Jets, you can just smell the stink through the fucking screen. Zach Wilson is a turnover machine. Zach Wilson is he is ass right now. Do I expect that me to mean that he's going to be a bust? No, I think he figures it out. I think Salah's a great head coach, but here the Denver Broncos and Teddy Bridgewater have been playing so well recently that I am all in favor of Teddy Bridgewater having a huge game yet again here up against the Jets. It appears that there is no breaks on the train because Jerry Judy ends up getting hurt and then bada bing, bada boom. Then now Cortland Sutton's the clear wide receiver one there. Feels like nothing was even gone. This Teddy Two Gloves led Denver Broncos team has been on real now they haven't really faced a tough task yet they have played the Giants they have played the Jaguars and now they play the Jets so that's a quick 3-0 for the team 
But after that, that's when we'll see the true tough test for Teddy Bridgewater. But that doesn't matter this week because all we know is he's playing up against the Jets and he should be able to eviscerate that garbage ass defense. At number 14, we have Ryan Tannehill of the Tennessee Titans going up against the Indianapolis Colts. This is far from an ideal matchup, but the Colts defense just hasn't looked all that great. Now, Ryan Tannehill didn't struggle last week at all. He threw a touchdown that was called back. He threw about a zillion yards in that game, but they ended up scoring all their points with Derrick Henry. I expect Ryan Tannehill to have more touchdowns in this game than he did last week. I expect Ryan Tannehill to be a great quarterback on the season, so I'm not running away from Tannehill just yet. I think he's fine here up against the Colts. At number 15, we have Mr. You Like That, Kirk Cousins of the Minnesota Vikings going up against the Seattle Seahawks in Minnesota. This offense has just been moving so smoothly. KJ Osborne seems to be a very vital piece in this offense, as well as Adam Thielen, as well as obviously Justin Jefferson. This team has looked very good. Will Dalvin Cook end up suiting up on Sunday? My best guess on that. Now, again, I'm not some type of a fucking doctor here. I'm just a guy who talks about fantasy football into a webcam, but I do believe that personally Dalvin Cook will end up suiting up, which does help out Kirk Cousins. It also could hurt Kirk Cousins, right? Because maybe they try to run the ball more but they'd still run the ball a decent amount with Alexander Madison. This is a game that I talked about with Russell Wilson that I believe will be a back and forth affair. So I like Kirk Cousins a ton here up against Seattle. At number 16, we have Derek Kaa of the Las Vegas Raiders going up against the Miami Dolphins. Now, normally a matchup up against the Dolphins for an offense is kind of scary because the Dolphins have one of the best pass defenses in the NFL. But what I talked about with Josh Allen is that this defense is just going to give up at half, that we are going to, I'm a Dolphins fan, we're going to be down by a million at half or maybe it's 14 to zero and the Dolphins offense is showing no try with Jacoby Brissett under center and then guess what fucking happens the defense rolls over they go to sleep and then Derek Carr pounds us out silently into the night. Derek Carr has looked so good thus far this season. It's almost shocking. In week number one, everyone's making fun of Derek Carr. And then in the second half, the beast was unleashed. And he started playing very well up against the Ravens. Looked stout last week up against the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. So he's had three tough defenses in a row. And he's played quite well every single game. So there's at no point right now, should you want to doubt Derek Carr, he has looked very good. So I'm going to continue to kind of keep moving him up the rankings as quarterback number 16 on the week but again this is definitely a tough matchup it's far from an easy matchup for Derek Carr at number 17 we have Big Ben Roethlisberger of the Pittsburgh Steelers going up against the Cincinnati Bengals now on paper this is a fucking smash matchup this is a Hulk smash matchup this is a game where Big Ben should slap the Cincinnati Bengals defense up before they can even see it coming but in reality, when these two teams play, you can throw the book out the window, the record book. You can throw everything out the fucking window. You can throw the kitchen sink at the goddamn wall because Big Ben Roethlisberger probably won't look as good as I expect because that's always what happens. The Bengals defense plays well, but this should be a close game game. Big Ben has not looked the greatest this season, but Big Ben typically plays much better at home. This is a home game up against the Cincinnati Bengals. Deontay Johnson will not be playing, but Chase Claypool and Juju Smith-Schuster, obviously still great receivers, so it obviously it sucks to lose your number one weapon for Big Ben, but at the same time, it's like, how much did you really lose? Because Juju, as well as Chase Claypool, are definitely solid options. So I think Big Ben will be good this week, quarterback 17. At number 18, this is where things start to get dicey for me. We got Justin Fields of the Chicago Bears going up against the Cleveland Browns in Cleveland. Justin Fields is one of the most interesting quarterbacks to be kind of Put your eyes on this week because I think Justin Fields is great. I think he's in a great situation, but this is his first ever NFL game, his first ever NFL start up against a tough Browns defense. The Browns defense obviously isn't the best defense in the NFL, but to me, it's one of them. And I think Justin Fields may struggle in his first ever NFL action as the starting quarterback of the team. Sure, he has played thus far. He played last week, but that was not his first ever start. I think the jitters may get to him and he may struggle a bit in this game, but I do believe Justin Fields will be a guy that you can lean on as a starter going forward. Unless, of course, Matt Nagy's dumbass ends up sitting him down for Andy Dalton, which is always entirely possible. At number 19, we have Matty Ice Ice Baby dun, 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 of the Atlanta Falcons going up against the New York Football Giants in New York. So Matt Ryan, he has not looked good 
at all this season. In week number one, he looked fucking putrid, but is it even his fault? The offensive line couldn't block me if I was out there by like the third quarter. They just get so tired and then Matt Ryan gets plowed out. Matt Ryan played all right last week up against the Bucks. I expect him to be fine here up against the Giants, but he's definitely far from an ideal quarterback that you want to be starting on the week. At number 20, we have I'm in the pocket like Burrow. Joe Burrow, quarterback of the Cincinnati Bengals, going up against the Pittsburgh Steelers in Pittsburgh. Burrow just hasn't looked that good either, if I'm being honest with you. He hasn't looked bad, but he hasn't looked great. He's without T. Higgins this week, which is worrisome. Up against the Steelers' defense, just doesn't seem like an ideal matchup. Now, again, like I talked about with Big Ben, this is a game where I wouldn't be surprised if the Bengals were going toe-to-toe with the Pittsburgh Steelers, but based upon the defensive matchup, I just don't like it this week for Burrow. Now on to the final quarterbacks of the week to be discussing, 21, 22, 23, and 24. At number 21, we have famous Jameis Ida W. Winston of the New Orleans Saints going up against the New England Deflatriots. This matchup is scares me. Jameis Winston looked great week one, week number two up against the Panthers. He looks terrible. Week number three, he faces an even tougher defense in New England. This game scares the fuck out of me. But Jameis, he is that risky guy. He's that guy that you throw into your lineup, you close your fucking eyes, and I wouldn't be surprised if Jameis hung 35 fantasy points on the New England Patriots. I also wouldn't be surprised if Jameis Winston scored seven points, scored five points, gets pulled for Taysom Hill in this game. That wouldn't surprise me at all either. Jameis is a high-risk, high-reward player every single week. This matchup to me, though, tells me that you shouldn't be taking the risk because he's going up against the Patriots defense that just made Zach Wilson do his best Jameis Winston impression, throwing not one, not two, not three, but four INTs up against the Patriots last week. So Jameis is far from an ideal start this week. At number 22, we have Baker Mayfield of the Cleveland Browns going up against Chicago. Chicago, Baker Mayfield has been decent this season. He's a quarterback that doesn't interest me for fantasy. He's a much better real-life NFL quarterback quarterback than a fantasy football quarterback. Nick, that doesn't really make much sense. Uh, The reason why I think that is because in real life, Baker doesn't make these costly mistakes in a majority of the games. He's never going to fuck the team out of losing, but he's also never going to really lead the team, hoorah, down the field like four fucking times, throw like four touchdowns or something crazy deep down in the game. That's not what he's going to do. The plan for the Browns is to run the ball, and that's okay. That's okay, because that's how they win the games. That's what they're looking to do. But for fantasy, it's not ideal. Baker quarterback, 22 at 23. We have probably, is this the worst start to a rookie quarterback's career ever for someone that was as highly touted as Trevor Lawrence? Up against the Arizona Cardinals this week, hell to the nah. Am I going to want to start Trevor Lawrence this week? Fuck that, man. Trevor Lawrence hasn't looked great. Sure, he has the upside. He has the weapons around him, but Urban Meyer seems like a complete and utter fucking disgrace. It seems like Urban Meyer has no idea what he's doing. I don't even think Trevor Lawrence is like a bad player or something. Obviously, he's not. He was the first overall pick out of Clemson, won the natty his rookie year. He's clearly a good player, but man, oh man, Urban Meyer has really screwed him over. At number 24, we have Jared Goff of the Detroit Lions going up against the Baltimore Ravens. The reason why I have Goff ranked inside the top 24 is because there's a chance that the Ravens just just fucking plowing him in the ass, right? Just, just, just hammering the defense in and then... Boom, now Jared Goff has to sling a million times late in the game. Now, that could result in four picks, or it could result in four tugs. So with that said, Jared Goff, quarterback 24, he is upside every single week because of just how bad the Lions are that they have to throw the ball a lot later on in the game. So thank you guys all so much for watching. If you did end up enjoying, please make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, as well as hitting that like button. Thank you guys all so much for 18 thousand subscribers we're going to continue to keep on having fun every single day i love you guys so much have a great rest of your guys day as always